this right here is a activity tracker, a uh, fitness tracker that contains a uh, ADS 1292 uh, ECG front end IC. So it, uh, it's an ECG. It's a, it's a fitness uh, tracker with an ECG. It also has a uh, Nordic NRF52832 MCU in it, uh, which means that you can program it with Arduino and you'll have the power of an ARM Cortex uh, M4 MCU, which is really cool, and Bluetooth, which is great. Um, so this thing cost me uh, $35. I've seen it online for $30. And you get a, um, a display, a uh, organic LED display. You get the accelerometer, battery. Um, you get a little flash memory chip. Um, you get you know the buttons and stuff, all that good stuff. Uh, and of course, the ECG. Um, and it's super hackable, which makes it an awesome prototyping platform for all kinds of wearables projects. Um, I've been doing a bunch of these uh, fitness tracker uh, hacks this summer. Um, I do some of these uh, at work. I use them as a prototyping, plat prototyping platform at work. Uh, and uh, this is a chance to add uh, bioimpedance, whether it's uh, ECG, EEG, or EMG to basically this kind of series of uh, fitness trackers that I've been hacking. So um, I've been making all this stuff available open source uh, with lots of code examples. And this is true for this little guy right here as well. Um, so just to kind of uh, to demonstrate the, the capabilities of this little guy, I built an EEG uh, headset. And just to, to mix things up, I made it um, a clip-on. It clips on glasses. Here, I'll show you. Uh, okay, so it's a little modular, which is kind of cool. Uh, these are another pair of my glasses, and uh, this is the strap for the, the fitness tracker. <laughs> um, and this little guy fits in, inside there on the glasses. Let me see if I can let it boom. And let it boom. Okay, so boom, and take the ear electrode, just like that. Okay, cool. So um, all this stuff, this will get trimmed eventually. It's uh, easier to uh, shorten the wire than it is to lengthen it. So unless I need to shorten it, I might as well let it stay long. Um, anyway, uh, so basically what this does is we have this, um, this ECG chip, the ECG front end, ADS-1292. Uh, it's a two-channel ECG front end, but we only use one. We have this um, frontal lobe uh, uh, dry electrode right here. Uh, and then the, um, the reference, the EG reference, is just the uh, right leg drive. Um, on the, the, the ADS-1292. Um, so the, uh, the interesting thing about the ADS-1292 is although it's marketed by Texas Instruments as uh, an ECG front end, it's part of a family of trips uh, that include like a wide array of bioimpedance sensing applications. So um, some of you may be familiar with uh, OpenBCI, which is um, a pretty successful, pretty well-known um, open source uh, EEG platform, and um, that uses the ADS-1299. Uh, uh, um, so that's kind of the, the big brother to this chip. Um, but this whole family of chips uh, uses really similar um, silicon. Uh, a lot of the, the, the kind of uh, the technology, the, the, the techniques, the, the, the kind of uh, low-level stuff um, that goes on on OpenBCI is also present here. Uh, and the particular applications these things are marketed for uh, sometimes has more to do with kind of Texas Instruments business plans than it does with the actual technology. So basically, the, the long and short is that this um, chip, this, uh, the, this ECG front end, can be used for a variety of uh, bioimpedance applications. Uh, you can get uh, EEG out of it, you can get EMG out of it, and of course, uh, marketed for ECG. Um, so what does that all mean? That means that because we have access to this chip here uh, and we have it on this super cheap, super compact uh, little 
fitness tracker. Uh, it gives us the ability to do all kinds of nifty little um, bioimpedance sensing projects. Uh, is it going to be a top of the line EEG uh, or even ECG? No, of course not. Um, this is a cheap little device. Uh, but can you get it to do cool stuff? Absolutely. Uh, and that's what we're all about. Um, so I'm going to get into a demonstration uh, of the code. Um, and you'll get to see the, the data visualized. Um, and all that good stuff. Before I, I actually go about it, this is just one of the, uh, the reasons I did this whole little uh, EEG headset thing is um, this right here. <laughs> I'm sure you'll recognize this. Uh, this is the, the MindFlex headset from uh, Mattel and NeuroSky. Um, I led a workshop at a hackathon a couple months ago, uh, Brain Hack, uh, at CMI, uh, where I work put on. Uh, I led a workshop um, hacking these things. We had a whole bunch of these, and uh, we kind of split up into pairs, and everybody got to uh, connect um, the uh, MindFlex to an Ar Arduino over a serial. It's a super easy project. Um, MindFlex is like one of the most widely known and popular uh, hacking projects ever. Uh, I can't think of any other hardware hacking project that is as well known as the MindFlex. Uh, I mean, can you think of any other off-the-shelf device that people hack as like a, a project that is more well known than MindFlex? I can't think of anything. Uh, the ironic thing there is that um, it's a black box that has, hasn't been hacked. It's the most popular hardware hacking project, and yet um, the actual like core functionality of the MindFlex is still a black box and, and nobody really hacks it. Uh, the way that it actually works is NeuroSky has this little proprietary um, like uh, concentration and meditation output from their uh, module. And that's the output that actually uh, that, that actually does like the game, the little like the, the Star Wars game where the ball it levitates. It's that output that controls it. But it's all black box, it's all proprietary. And there's all kinds of processing that happens on the NeuroSky module, uh, and nobody really knows what it does. But um, and this is like ten-year-old technology. Um, you would think that someone would have come along and kind of done something similar, except open source, and maybe not with everything you know um, on on the silicon. Maybe actually using code on like a microcontroller to do it. Um, I haven't seen anything like that, so I thought as long as I'm doing some kind of demo project. Um, with this ECG slash EEG slash EMG fitness tracker, uh, I'll take a crack at it. Why not? So the idea here is to take the data from this ECG front end, uh, modify the fitness tracker so that it can kind of like, it's a, an EEG form factor, you know, headset, um, and then take that data and, um, and get the, the EEG um, frequency bands um, you know, using either getting it straight up into the frequency domain through like a fast Fourier transform or uh, using filters, um, using a frequency impulse response or, or fur filters, which this is my first time screwing around with those, which is a lot of fun, very interesting. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit uh, more later, but good fun stuff. Um, basically, you know, get the, the actual EEG, um, uh, wave bands isolated uh, and take that data and um, basically train a neural network. So uh, it's it's kind of an uphill battle to to replicate what NeuroSky did on this hardware because everything they did was they had a, a team of engineers to 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 build the product. You know everything was from the, the, the ground up designed to do this one purpose. And, and here we are trying to take like an ECG fitness tracker and, and do like uh, basically like on device brain state classification. Um, it's, uh, it's a big ask. Uh, and there were a lot of compromises that had to be made to get it to work. It did get it to work. It took a long time. It took a lot of trial and error, but it did work. Um, the, the biggest thing that I had going for me was, um, was customizing the classification. So, um, what NeuroSky did is that they basically had to come up with a, like a generalized way of extracting, um, uh, of classifying like concentration and, um, and relaxation or inattentiveness or meditation or whatever they want to call it. Um, 
And uh, what I do is I allow people to uh, gather relevant data from themselves and then train their own neural network to accomplish that. Uh, and there are a lot of advantages to doing that. Um, not only because people's um, you know uh, brain waves, <laughs> put it that way, may be uh, may be different, maybe specific to them, um, but also everything from like the the, the humidity in the air to um, to how hygienic people are, how much like dead skin is is beneath the electrodes. All this stuff has a big impact on performance. And so by collecting data, you know, you get around the like bad hygiene and super humid air, uh, like uh, variables that might be uh, confounding um, a kind of more generalized approach. Uh, so it's also a lot of fun. It's fun. Uh, and uh, I'll be showing you how to use uh, synaptic.js, which is like the most underrated um, uh, machine learning uh, platform out there. It is it is this teensy little dinky JavaScript library that does amazing things that um, if you go to like the support forums for TensorFlow, you'll have people asking for features from Tensor, from uh, Synaptic.js, uh, asking for those features out of TensorFlow. And the TensorFlow people are like, oh, we really want to do that. We really want to do it. We're working on it. And they said that like a year ago, and they still haven't done it. Um, so uh, the, the awesome thing about Synaptic is that you can export these standalone neural networks uh, and it's like cut and paste into practically any programming language you want. It doesn't matter. I'll show you. Uh, the end result is you can run real, um, real, non-trivial, functional, practical neural networks on uh, an Arduino or at least an ARM Cortex running Arduino Simple C. Um, which is really cool. And I think so many people would find that useful. I just, I wish more people knew about that. It's really super duper useful. I use that for all kinds of stuff. Um, okay, so with no further ado, um, let's get down to uh, the nitty gritty. 